A comprehensive piece there by Ryan Bechun. After a marathon six-hour hearing, the Caribbean Court of Justice said it will rule on Wednesday on an appeal related to the March 2nd election brought by the PPP General Secretary Barrett Jagde and the presidential candidate Irfan Ali. Jagde and Ali are appealing a Guyana Court appeal decision, which sought to insert the word valid in its provisions of the Constitution addressing the election of the president. The Court of Appeal is also ruling and sought to draw a nexus between the Order 60 D dealing with the recount and the word valid. This is the latest legal hurdle in a battle that has persisted for almost four months. But what is at stake and how will Guyana emerge from this impasse? Joining us to discuss this, we have Alan Nanlal. He is a former Attorney General and Professor Andy Knights. I would like to mention at this time that we have been trying to get a member of the caretaker or the incumbent government, the APNU uh, party, to join us. However, we are yet to hear back from them. So we, as we say here in, uh, on television, the show must go on. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Hema. Thanks for having us. Now, let me start with you, Mr. Nanlal. I know we have a tight show, but the CCJ matter, it comes when the judgment comes back. Is it is this matter going to end? Will there be a clear winner for the Guyana elections at the end of this? Um, thank you very much, Hema. Of course, we expect that um, Guyana will win as a result of the court ruling. We anticipate that the court will vacate the, the judgment or the order of the Court of Appeal and uh, possibly set aside the uh, perverted uh, report presented to the commission, the Elections Commission by the Chief Elections Officer, thereby paving the way for the commission to direct him again to prepare the statutory report using the results generated by the recon process. Mm -hmm. As you are aware, that recon process was observed by CARICOM and was certified by CARICOM to be free, fair, and credible, was certified by all the international organizations uh, in this part of the hemisphere, the Commonwealth, the CARICOM, the Carter Center, the uh, local observer teams, all the international community, all the diplomatic, um, all the diplomatic missions here, the European Union, um, I, I, every major organization and every major uh, leader that has some, that has had some nexus or who has had some nexus with the electoral process and who have been part of this engagement have said publicly that the report, the recon process was fair, credible, and its results must be used because it mirrors the will of the people. So the CCJ matter, Mr. Nanla, let me ask you this. On Wednesday, at that point, whatever comes out, is it then going to end this process? Will the impasse come to an end? Well, <clears throat> the CCJ cannot usurp mm -hmm. the functions of the Elections Commission and the CCJ can remove um, obstacles that have been put in the place of the commission or put in the commission or in the face of the commission, hurdles that are, that are preventing the electoral process from legally concluding in the manner contemplated by the law. Sure. Um, that is all that the, the CCJ can do. And uh, it will be left to the commission itself to discharge its constitutional and legal mandate, which is to declare the results yeah. uh, as generated by the recount as um, were counted on elections day. Let me bring uh, Professor Knight into the conversation. Professor Knight, CARICOM has been vocal, as Mr. Nanal has also said in this matter. And I'm going to read, an eminent group of scholars have called on caretaker president David Granger to concede defeat and make way for the duly elected candidate to be sworn in. Professor Knight, considering CARICOM, the OAS and other entities have spoken on this, what will the future of Guyana look like if this matter does not come to an end? Are we looking at sanctions? Are we looking at blacklisting? What can the international community do as, since they've already made a position on this? Well, that's a good question. I, 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 I'm hoping that um, uh, that President Ranger does the right thing and demits office and, um, and, re and respect the will of the, the, the Guyanese people. Um, but if that doesn't happen, uh, I, I would suspect that Guyana could be facing some serious challenges in the future. 
uh, perhaps even sanctions, as you said, uh, sanctions from uh, members of the Car Car Caribbean community. Mm -hmm. Um, it may lose its membership in, in CARICOM. Um, the Commonwealth will certainly have a, a say on this as well. Yeah. And I've heard Owen Arthur talk to him in person, and he says suggesting that may, perhaps even the Com Commonwealth may actually decide to um, to to um, disallow membership in the Commonwealth for Guyana. So this could be very serious. Yeah. And of course, the United States has also indicated that that they will not not be very happy, of course, with, with any result that doesn't respect the will of the people. Let me bring back Mr. Nanlal into the conversation. If the CCJ votes against you in this matter, is this the end of the road for the PPP in the election impasse? Whether the CCJ votes um, rules in our favor or not, the fact is that the recount, the election results are there, the ballots were counted on elections night in accordance with law, and there was a request or an agreement to recount all those ballots. They were recounted again. The elections were certified to be free and fair by all the international observers, Carter Center, the CARICOM, the Commonwealth, the OAS, all the diplomatic community. The president himself said that elections were free and fair and credible. Leading members of his government said that. They submitted a report to the State Department in which they said that the elections were free and fair and that the PVP was interfering with the process post the elections. Yeah. Of course, that is not true. But um, then you had the recount process again being supervised, observed, and televised nationally, and they lost again. They, it mirrored. The results of the recount mirrored exactly what the results were on the elections day, the night that the votes were counted. Let me so, and then, and then the, the, the GCOM is being prevented, or rather you have a, a rogue elections officer who has a statutory mathematical function to perform, which is which is to total the votes. And he arrogated unto himself a power that he doesn't have to discount votes that he claims are invalid votes. And, and that report, when, when, sorry, GCOM already made a decision of what votes they will count, yeah. meaning that they will take into account the results generated by the recount. That's a decision of GCOM. And based upon that, he was given specific directions in the language of the law to prepare what is called what is a statutory reform. And then he took it upon himself using certain um, pronouncements from the Court of Appeal to give him coverage and to also carry out the agenda of the uh, AP and U AFC because he's been working with them all, all along the process well, to present a report. That's a serious that allegation, Mr. Nanlal. Nanlal. And I, I don't know if we can say that, but I want to bring uh, Professor but, Knight back into the conversation. I want to quote from a paper that you presented, Professor, Bill, in terms of you believe that the impact goes beyond Guyana. Uh, in, that, in that paper, you also stated fraudulently changed the results. That was a very strong statement to make. Do you think that the Guyana election is rigged, Professor Knight? Well, you know, I had I had the opportunity actually to speak to a number of observers. Um, Owen Arthur, uh, who represented the Commonwealth, um, a former Prime Minister of Barbados. Um, the the EU, European Union ambassador uh, to Guyana, who was also an observer at this election. They all came to the same conclusion that, uh, you know, everyone thought the, the vote was fair and square. Um, and then all of a sudden, to change the outcome of the, of the election. So um, I can't say anything else other than what I've been told by yeah. observers. Well, we did mention earlier that we've tried to get a representative from APNU. They did confirm, but they did not uh, uh, answer their calls today. Uh, Ms. Nana, let me ask you this. There have been allegations of fraud that the APNU, that the incumbent government has said, has made uh, this almost, they, they said that the election, they discovered a lot of fraud and a lot of gaps in the election. How would you respond to that? Well, let me read from what CARICOM report, the CARICOM team that came here and participated in the recount process and were there when these allegations, and these were all, they, these, these people just made allegations, provided no evidence whatsoever. And this is what the CARICOM team said in their report. Let me quote quickly. We are, however, of the unshakable belief that the people of Guyana expressed their will at the ballot box. And as a result, 
the three-person CARICOM observer team concludes that the recon results are completely acceptable. That one quote. Let me quote again. Yeah. Despite our concerns, nothing that we witnessed warrants a challenge to the inescapable conclusion that the recount results are acceptable and should constitute the basis of the declaration of the results of March the 2nd, 2020. Any aggrieved political party has been afforded the right to seek redress before the court in the form of an election petition. Another quote, the national recount process then, despite some of its minor flaws, is not an indictment of the 2020 polls and the team can categorically rejects the concerted public efforts to discredit the 2020 polls up to the dis disastrous Region 4 tabulations. The recounting of the votes was conducted with as much precision but, as Man, possible. Let me ask you this, and I know that I, I know we're against time, but also there were allegations that persons who had passed away are dead people, and I saw the headline, uh, were also on the voting elements of it. How do you respond to that to the viewers in Trinidad? Well, that is what I'm saying to you. This is CARICOM team. I don't, if I say it to you, it will be self-serving or, or it can be viewed as self-serving. That's why I'm taking my time to read excerpts of the CARICOM or the team mm. that was part of the recon process and CARICOM observed the, the entire election. What is all, the, every single person and body that observed those, those elections and the recon process, every single one of them said that the process was fair, transparent, and credible. Let the me ask you this before we wrap this, because we have about a minute again. What is the possibility, Mr. Nanla, that this country is on the verge of unrest? Because we know the history of Guyana. You have a minute to respond to this. Because they're four months on, there is no clear winner on this. They are trying, the, the rigging cabal in the incumbent government are trying to create a situation of unrest. But it has not happened because their story is not a credible one. No sensible person believe it. So I don't believe sure. that we will have any uh, unrest. Professor Knight, you have the final word this night tonight. What do you want to say? We're looking at Guyana. You have written on this. Uh, you say you also stand by the CARICOM matter. What do you want to say to Trinidad and Tobago? Because everyone is a little confused. Four months on, no clear winner. Well, you know, I, I, I believe that we, we have to sort this problem out. And, and arrive at a conclusion that will allow people to have a national conversation in Guyana of all parties, all ethnicities, um, to, to bring about some reconciliation and healing because this has really caused a rift in the population. And I think the only way we're gonna get around this uh, to stop this happening from, from uh, election time to election time uh, is, is to have a national reconciliation kind of movement within Guyana. And, and I think that's the only way to solve this problem uh, in the future. Well, in the in end of all of this, the CCJ matter is just one legal hurdle. Gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for joining us tonight uh, for this very tight discussion. I know that this is not going to be the last time that we're speaking on this issue as we continue to look at the future of Guyana. So much is at stake for the oil-rich nation. But I'm Hema Ramkisun, and this has been the end of the discussion.